Warm welcome to everyone. So, good morning. Salam alaikum. Thanks for joining this open banking session. Uh, I think we will get started. So, okay, everyone, uh, thank you once again for joining the session. Uh, let me just introduce the team uh, on, on this uh, panel today. My name is Uday Shankar, Uday Shankar Karepat. I'm the Vice President and General Manager for the Middle East Africa for WSO2. I'm based out of our Dubai office. We also have Sheshika Fernando, who is our VP and head for the BFSI practice. We have Urmila Chandrasekharam, who is the channel manager for MIA, and Imad Rizni, who is a senior solutions engineer, and who will be running you through most of this uh, solution deck today. Uh, so before we get started, I just wanted to you know, let you know that any queries, any questions that you may have, please feel free to uh, you know, post it on the chat and the team will answer whatever they can. If not, we will definitely respond to you if, if, if there are any questions that are unanswered, okay? So before we get started, I just thought, let me, I'll just give you a little overview about uh, WSO2. Uh, WSO2 is the number one open source uh, software company uh, providing digital transformation uh, technology to, cu to customers across the globe. We have we were founded in 2005, uh, and uh, we currently are about 800 plus employees, uh, and and doing a 16 percent year on year growth. So we are headquartered in 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 US, and we have presence across multiple countries, uh, and and in the region we are having our office in in Dubai. So we have about about 600 plus customers, and the good part is that we have bought. We have done about close to 140 customers in, in into 2020 during these COVID times. Okay, and 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 uh, the technology what we have been uh, providing to our customers to enhance their digital experience. Uh, we have uh, two industry leading products, which is the WSO2 API Manager and the WSO2 Identity Server. Uh, the API manager is a, is a complete API lifecycle management solution uh, is a product and and the identity servers helps in the federating the you know identity and uh, um, access management for customers across the globe. Uh, we have developed using these uh, leading products so we have developed a solution on the open banking and on open healthcare. The open banking product is what we'll be discussing today. We also have a, a strategic consulting team which helps our customers to uh, get insights on their existing landscape, provide architectural as assistance, and help them move forward in their in their digital transformation journey. Uh, we have been recognized by the industry leading analysts, uh, namely Forrester and Kupinga Cole. Uh, we have been featured in the in the leader segment in the Forrester Wave uh, in the API management solution, which is mainly for you know on the strategy and and on the on the on the capability side. And we are we have been rated as a strong performer in the Forrester Wave for our customer identity management solution. And uh, we are we are we are featuring in the leader quadrant in the in leader compass in the coupling of whole uh, compass. Just a snapshot about some of the customers whom we have been servicing over the last many years. And as you can see, we, we are uh, agnostic across multiple verticals. Uh, and and we've, we've, we've been you know, working with marquee logos across these segments. Uh, today we'll talk about our, our, some of our customers in the financial segment. And uh, uh, so that's what we'll be doing. So, so one, one important point I wanted to highlight is that while we talked about a 16% year on year growth, the Middle East Africa region has been one of the fastest growing regions for WSO2. So we've been clocking about 82% uh, growth over the last years. And, and that's where we would like to invite our partners to leverage some of this growth, what we are doing. So we would really like our partners to start being a part of this growth journey and uh, that's why we're having the session okay we have a highly channel driven strategy and we will encourage all our partners and support them in during the entire journey so we have our office in dubai and we are growing across the region we are uh, having ambitious plans to grow in the region 
So that's why one of the reasons why I'm leading this uh, growth here in, in based out of Dubai. Okay, so let me let me introduce you to Sheshi, whom we have, we have just I briefly touched upon. Sheshi will give you a, 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 a snapshot about our BFI sector commitment and what we have been doing this. Over to you, Sheshi. Thanks, Uday. Uh, hi, everyone, uh, and uh, happy to speak to you uh, today this morning. Um, so uh, I just want to highlight that uh, the BFSI sector is the largest industry sector that uh, WSO2 facilitates globally. Uh, as you can see uh, on the screen, 30% uh, of our global revenue comes from the BFSI sector and um, one third of our customer base uh, is uh, e either a bank or a financial services organization or an insurance company. Uh, we've just put a very, uh, very short snapshot of uh, some of the logos, some of the uh, customers we work with. Uh, but essentially, um, BFSI, uh, there is a, a very uh, important uh, focus on the sector uh, at WSO2. And as a result, we uh, take our technology, our uh, uh, integration, API management, uh, identity technology, uh, and we actively create um, industry specific solutions for the sector and uh, the open banking um, story that we are talking about today is one such. Uh, so uh, we've been doing open banking globally starting from actually even before PSD2 requirements uh, but uh, now with the regulated version of open banking we've done several deployments across the globe including uh, the Middle East, uh, and we just want to take this opportunity to um, share with you uh, how you can be um, a part of that uh, journey and collaborate and how to collaborate with us uh, in taking open banking uh, to the Middle East. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd like to hand over to Imad uh, to uh, talk about more detail uh, on the open banking solution. Thanks, Seshi. Hello everyone. So let's get right into it in the terms of open banking and uh, WSO2's vision with open banking. So we'll start off with a, a quick generous couple of statistics around open banking and how WSO2 currently sees open banking as a, a large global scale opportunity and we'll talk about the Middle East, uh, you know, opportunities as well in a bit. So a couple of quick statistics that, you know, we've seen uh, captured by, you know, Consentus and a couple of other platforms. So open banking has been growing drastically since 2018 PSD to UK. And currently we've, we've, we have basically gathered some statistics that there's over 3 million plus UK consumers using open banking data and making use of open banking APIs. There's over 470 authorized API consumers, that is the fintechs who are authorized to make use of open banking data, who are active in the European region. And there's a projected 1 billion plus of API calls within the UK, which was just for H1 of 2021. So there's a lot of you know, APIs that are being used in the UK and the EU regions, given that they are the most uh, matured in terms of open banking. And there's a lot of growth that we are also seeing open banking itself globally is growing three times over and there's 175 percent year-on-year growth and there's crazy amount of open banking platforms that are coming up there's different levels of support by different vendors and there's of course open banking uh, itself that is maturing into open finance space and the open data space itself so we're just at the beginning actually so if we take a look at the psd2 opportunity like i said it started in 2018 and we have currently over 75% banks in the UK who are planning to work with different fintechs and third party providers will be making use of open banking data, whether it's on account information or whether it's, you know, to do with payment space. And there's quite a lot of uh, money at play as well. There's close to 60 to $100 million of median annual spend on open banking by different banks in the EU regions. So if we take a look at the more larger picture and the more uh, larger opportunity at hand. We have seen as WSO2, we have seen open banking grow uh, largely in different regions. So we'll take a look at a couple of these regions. So Australia came up with their own version of open banking with the consumer data specification. 
and they started with a very mature uh, open banking specification and it is it, it's something that is still evolving and they are still uh, you know having multiple phases that have been implemented currently as we speak as well and then we have brazil another open banking region which is currently a very hot region and is also seeing multiple changes in different specifications but of course all of these uh, have open banking at its core and it doesn't change and open banking itself is uh, around your account information providing and payment space but of course all of these are going to be evolving into much greater uh, exposing of customer data through apis there are some other regions we can look at you know mexico and canada which is very hot region so canada is actually coming up with their open banking specification currently we've got singapore which, which has been developing their pilot specification for a couple of years and WSO2 has been involved with them as well. Uh, in the Asian or the APAC regions, we've seen Hong Kong uh, and Singapore, Vietnam coming up. And now let's take a look at Middle East. So Bahrain has been uh, a country that has been having multiple uh, iterations of open banking. So they had the Central Bank of Bahrain rule book and now they actually have the Bahrain open banking framework with, with, which went uh, in Q1 this year. Uh, which went live. And then we have the US and other regions that are also growing in terms of open banking. So there's a lot of opportunity that we see and what WSO2's vision is how we can capture open banking at this large scale and how we want to grow our BFSI space through our partners to capture these different opportunities. So we'll take a bit of focused look into the Middle Eastern region and the open banking uh, changes that we're currently seeing. So back in 2018, we had Bahrain who actually uh, started the open banking regulation movements in the GCC countries with a draft rule book from the Central Bank of Bahrain. And this was something that didn't get much traction initially. But in 2020, Bahrain actually expanded this to a complete full-blown open banking framework, which was actually more standardized and it contained more guidelines, which are very similar to the PSD to UK. And Bahrain actually had multiple banks that were requiring to comply by April this year. And then we had the Saudi Arabia. Uh, so Saudi Arabia uh, Monetary Authority actually released a regulation with the 2022 open banking go live goal, which is a very, uh, you know, interesting thing that they, you know, it is a very short deadline, but they're actually very fast moving. And the region itself is very advanced in terms of the payment space and the 2030 payment vision with Saudi Arabia and so on. And then we also have seen certain footprints of open banking popping up in UAE, in Kuwait, Oman, and all these other Middle Eastern regions. So we as WSO2 are looking to grasp this opportunity with open banking through our partner network in order to grow. So just a quick question to the audience as well. So I, I think we may have a quick uh, question popping up on your screen. So it's just a question on how your experience has been in the open banking space in the Middle East. And we're just looking to see you know, what kind of experiences you have had with your opportunities in hand, in your pipelines, whether you have seen any open banking opportunities that are looking to go live uh, in the short term, or whether anybody has indicated interest, you know, with the upcoming regulations for Saudi, for instance, or whether you actually do not have any, uh, you know, leads or anybody who's interested in open banking at all. We just want to see what your uh, experience has been in the Middle East regions as well. So I think this is just, just a quick question, which you now answer i'll just give it a couple of seconds for the folks to uh provide any answers so yeah it looks like we actually have uh, a couple of you know interest in terms of uh you know having interest in open banking for 2022 or 2023 so it seems that we do have certain interest in banks for immediately as well so yeah that that's pretty interesting to get some feedback in that sense so yeah thanks for that anyway so just wanted to engage with the audience a bit as well so let's look at the the larger picture of you know how we and you know how wso2 envisions to grasp this opportunity with open banking so how you as a partner can help us so we want to check and we want to touch base with you uh, on to seeing how how ready are you to scale up with uh, open banking and to use wso2 so there's a couple of different models that we can work with in terms of WSO2. So there are different opportunities and different ways in terms of flexibility. So we can start with the basic way, you know, in terms of having, you know, uh, 
using our open banking technology and engaging with consultancy firms to realize the value of our open banking solution. So you can harness the open banking power from WSO2, our core integration stack, and you know help deliver uh, a value-added open banking solution if you see an interest in your leads and in your uh, pipelines. You can also work as a reseller of WSO2 open banking. So you can expand your existing footprint. You can enhance your strategic value. You can basically deliver a full-fledged open banking uh, compliance and a commercial solution using our WSO2 open banking. You also have the capability of working together as, or you basically work as an OEM vendor with WSO2, where you can fill in any gaps you see with our WSO2 open banking solution. You white label our components and you can then build on or add value and integrate into it and provide that as your own commercial open banking solutions. And for S size, we actually have a very flexible technology platform. We have uh, you know, business models and different engagement frameworks, which we are able to work on into. But you know, these, these four are not something that we will limit on and WSO2 will actually have multiple flexible models to work with you. And as we you know, get to an end on this, we will have a discussion on that as well. So starting about open banking vision from WSO2. So WSO2 open banking has a couple of different things in mind and the entire purpose of it. So one of the major things is to accelerate the time to market. So WSO2 wants to deliver end-to-end -end compliance in any regulatory driven market by minimizing any development time. We only want uh, you know, the dev time to actually consist of something known as last mile compliance customizations. We will get into this in a bit of detail, but the major goal of open banking from WSO2 is to accelerate the time to market. We want to leverage and grow existing customer bases. So we want uh, you as partners to take our full solution and provide it to any prospects or any leads that you're talking to. And we want you to deliver the full out of the box capabilities of open banking ahead of competition. So you can then uh, you know, attract customers who are not actually interested in open banking, but probably have some vision on it. So we want you to leverage and grow your existing customer base. We want to provide pricing flexibility with our open banking solution. So there are multiple models you can work with uh, on our open banking component. So we have something known as an accelerator model, which I will get into. So this accelerator model allows you as a partner to have a lot of flexibility in terms of pricing of a WSO2 solution. And of course, we will work together on you know achieving your different models you want to work with. You can otherwise also go ahead and pick a componentized approach for bespoke deployment. So in the event you are working in terms of working with existing tech stacks, you have customers who have existing vendors who have already been chosen. There are ways we can work with WSO2 components and you know, fit into the existing stacks, integrate with the existing stacks and deliver targeted value over the existing technology. So we will walk into uh, architectural level discussions as well on this. And lastly, we want WS2 Open Banking to help secure the longer term opportunities so that you can build relationships with the customers and also provide this continuous compliance with uh, WS2 Open Banking, you know, via you as a partner, so that you can then build a relationship with the customer in terms of providing consistent and uh, continuous compliance to the different specifications of open banking by using our core products. So let's take a look at a very high level uh, platform overview, you know, how WSO2 envisions open banking and how you as partners come in to help take open banking to the new markets. So we will take a look at the left side corner or the left hand side. So we have the core WSO2 tech stack, which is what we maintain on an open source level. And it's what we WSO2 release to the public and we currently have. So we have WSO2 API manager, we have WSO2 enterprise integrator, we have the identity server and the streaming integrator. So we take the core WSO2 tech stack and we deliver this as you know, 60% of an open banking compliance. This open banking core uh, requires the core WSO2 tech stack. And open banking is something that WSO2 overlays on our core tech stack via something known as an open banking accelerator. So this open banking accelerator is something delivered and maintained by WSO2 for three global specifications, which WSO2 is currently and continuously involved in. 
So we have the UK, we have the EU PSD2, and we have the Australian CDS that WSO2 currently is building and maintaining on a continuous mode. So we have open banking accelerators that overlay functionality over our API manager and over our identity server and over our streaming integrator. This open banking accelerator will overlay open banking requirements, you know, certain things like dynamic client registrations, uh, which will bring into play, you know, certain components like consent management, which is required for open banking. It will bring into play certain security requirements for open banking, mutual transport layer securities, uh, certificate validations, you know, attribute certificates. Uh, it will bring into play certain analytics capturing and, you know, you need to do certain processing on analytics. You need to summarize analytics. It bring in, brings into play certain, uh, you know, certificates like the FAPI, which is the financial API grade. Uh, we bring in that into play with our open banking. Layer. So this open banking accelerator is something that WSO2 provides for three global specifications. And it can be replicated in most other regions we see in the Middle East as well currently. But this is something that's also extensible, just like our core WSO2 tech stack, the open banking accelerator is, has its own extension points and can be extended in order to build new accelerators if there is ever a requirement to change the core of open banking. So this open banking accelerator will bring you 30% of the way to from an end-to-end -end point of view on an open banking deployment. So the core tech stack plus the open banking accelerator will take you a 90% of the way to get any bank compliant in an open banking journey. So now let's take a look at the last mile of compliance, which is also known as the open banking toolkit. And this is where we uh, are looking to you as partners to assist WSO2 to grow and to basically grow largely and scale up in a more uh, easier manner. So open banking toolkits will contain components which will help achieve the last 10% of compliance required to comply within a region. So if we take a scenario where, uh, you know, Bahrain was a specification that was built over the PSD to UK, the open banking toolkit would contain certain changes that would help Bahrain banks be compliant while using a UK open banking accelerator. So this way we, we have separated, you know, and we are looking to you as partners to build these toolkits that may be required in different regions that are coming up with open banking. And this, these components are backed by WSO2 and we have different uh, enablements that we can provide you with in order to build these toolkits and maintain these toolkits. So these open banking toolkits contain things like API swagger files. It will contain certain specific data uh, publishing requirements to be built over streaming integrator. It will contain, it will contain certain changes on the uh, transport layer security cert at certain times. It would change certain validations on API scopes. So this last mile of compliance is that's uh, built on open banking toolkit of WSO2. So if we take an end-to-end -end journey that's required for open banking, we would start off with a core WSO2 tech stack, which will include API manager, identity server, a streaming integrator, and in some cases, enterprise integrator. We would then overlay open banking functionality on the API manager, on the identity server, and on the streaming integrator to bring in open banking. And then on the last mile, we would require US partners to help us build these open banking toolkits that would take us to the last bit of compliance and take that bank uh, to get compliant with the local regulators. So in a continuous, in general, continuous compliance mode, regulators would also evolve and would change the specifications as time goes on. So this open banking toolkit model allows you as a partner to modify the toolkit and continuously comply with the local regulations without actually going and changing the core open banking framework from WSO2. In the event that that requirement also is required, WSO2 has models to support that, which we will walk into as well. But open banking toolkit is generally what would be required to be maintained on a continuous mode. So you can build that relationship with the banks that you work with and maintain the toolkit for them and continuously help them comply with the local regulations. So this is a quick overview of the open banking framework and the open banking vision of WSO2. So now let's take a little look at the core technical capabilities that's required to get uh, open banking right. So this is based on WSO2's experience on a global point of view. We've worked with multiple regions across the globe. So 
open banking from WSO2 comes out of the box ready with a lot of things. So the first thing is we have standards based API templates that we provide. So WSO2 will provide the uh, standards based APIs for UK, for the next gen PSD2 and for the Australian CDR. So these three is something that WSO2 will maintain and we will provide with our open banking accelerator. Our same open banking framework is also capable of providing capabilities such as premium APIs, monetization, API products. So we have the same WS2 open banking solution that is extensible and is capable of handling this sort of functionality because it is built over our core WSO2 stack for integration. So you're basically getting a value added open banking over the existing breadth of functionality. We have third party onboarding and management, which is built into the open banking solution. So this third party onboarding and management will help fintechs simply onboard themselves with very uh, intuitive user interfaces, or you can simply use dynamic client registration endpoints to onboard fintechs in a very standardized manner as per regulatory requirements. We have developer portals and marketplaces. So we have publisher portals and we have developer portals. So banks, could make use of WS2 open banking solution to publish open banking APIs for fintechs to make use of. And they can also use this as an extensible uh, solution for their internal APIs for internal marketplaces and for their existing partner APIs. So this complete capability and the breadth of functionality is there. WS2 open banking solution could be extended with our integra enterprise integrator to do banking systems integration. So we already provide uh, certain co-banking connectors in terms of the IBM is 400. We work with other systems, but the enterprise integrator is a very capable component and can be used in conjunction with the open banking solution from WSO2 to simply integrate with existing bank systems, override any legacy infrastructure and take on and work very seamlessly. We have a data analytics component which can be used to capture certain statistics that's required for open banking regulation. So, in certain countries, you will have requirements to provide banks, uh, you know, with statistics. So WS2 Open Banking Solution works with our streaming integrator to capture these analytics and, uh, you know, summarize this and make it available so that banks can comply with local regulations. And we can also integrate with the existing technology that banks may have, you know, in terms of EKS stacks. Uh, it can be Grafana, Prometheus dashboards. We have those capabilities as well. The open banking solution itself could be integrated with existing bank fraud detection systems. So this is something that comes into requirements in uh, a couple of open banking regions from our experience, uh, especially in the UK region. And then the open banking solution is also very compliant in terms of the data security requirements for open banking. So this includes certificate based validations, uh, you know, mutual transport layer security and carrying forward SSL certificates. And then lastly, we have the consent and consumer authentication. So the consent management framework is something very core to open banking requirements in terms of accessing account information and payment information. And this is something that we have core capabilities with, with WSO2. Uh, so now let's take a quick look at uh, a couple of high level architectures that we can use WSO2 open banking. So open banking from WSO2 can be taken into two parts. So we have this light orange component, which would contain the mandatory requirements for a typical open banking deployment. So we have FinTech partners in typical open banking space who would interact with open banking APIs. So from a WSO2 point of view, we provide the open banking APIs on the API manager from WSO2. So we have the API gateway offering, which you know is the runtime of our API manager. We have the developer portal, we have consent enforcement, and we have throttling. So these are all requirements that come into play from WSO2's API manager component. And then we have the WSO2 identity access management component, which would take into consideration functionality such as consent management, the financial API grade implementations, and DCR. So this light orange component is basically a minimum full stack deployment that may be required from WSO2 to get a bank open banking compliant. And then we have the extension of enterprise integrator, which can be used to integrate with any digital banking, co-banking systems, payment systems, etc. But at a minimum, this is a full high level architecture for a full stack deployment. But WSO2's deployment models are also flexible in the sense 
we have the capability of also using a single component from WSO2, given, you know, there may be existing technology already in place. There may be already, uh, you know, existing integrations into online banking systems and so on. So we have a gateway stack deployment. In this case, WSO2 will be able to deploy our API manager and which will take on certain responsibilities and it will do certain capabilities that are required only for the API management side of open banking. And we can integrate with any existing identity access management technology provided the bank has the capability to provide this. So for instance, generally uh, we look at IAM capabilities on you know, starting from transient management. So this includes uh, you know, uh, single sign-on capabilities, authentication, uh, adaptive authentication, identity federation capabilities from a bank's existing technology. So WSO2 will be able to integrate our API manager into those components, provided they have the right uh, feature set for open banking. And we can seamlessly work and provide a gateway stack deployment. On the other hand, we also have the flexibility in terms of providing a consent stack deployment where we could you know, look at leveraging a bank's existing API management technology and making use of WSO2's identity access management and the consent management framework. So in this case, WSO2 will look at you know, uh, a, a vendor who is already capable of you know, performing functionality such as API management. Uh, it can be JWT, token validation, consent enforcement, uh, mutual transport list securities and certificate validations. So this is another model that WSO2 can look at working with in terms of flexibility. So just a quick uh, you know, question back to the audience. So is there you know, any deployment model that you feel is currently suited to your customers uh, you know, that you are seeing you know, in this region that we are talking about currently? So what's the deployment model that you feel is most suited to your customers? So let's take a look at, you know, a couple of things that we are trying to solve with our open banking vision from WSO2. So the first thing we're looking at is, like I said, the core thing is ongoing compliance. So we want to help, you know, banks comply with the standards. These standards are fast changing, you know, depending on the different regions, but we want uh, to provide the maximum out of the box capabilities with our solution. And we want you as partners to help us get that last mile of compliance. And we will work into how we can enable you to do that in a bit, but the main goal is ongoing compliance. Then we look at security in terms of we can provide the out of the box required uh, open ID FAPI uh, requirements for read and write APIs. We provide the API security components. So we're trying to help the banks, you know, resolve any security issues they may have in that sense. We want to help you, uh, you know, build and protect trust amongst the bank's customers. We have consent management frameworks built in. We have intuitive user interfaces with this. We want to overcome any legacy architecture, and we also want to help reduce risk overall, you know, in terms of compliance and digital transformation battles. We as WSO2 have a complete uh, digital transformation integration platform that we're deploying here, and open banking is something that is bringing is being brought in over that. So it's a very capable platform that we are trying to put into banks, and we want to help them solve their other problems apart from open banking as well. So who is a toolkit partner so in this case we are looking to you as partners to help us build this like i mentioned so a toolkit partner is someone who is able to analyze the delta from these different specifications so as i mentioned wso2 will be working with three specifications largely the uk the australian and the next gen psd2 but all these newer regions are always going to deviate from one of these three global specifications so generally a toolkit partner is going to be analyzing a delta from an accelerator point of view to see how they need to complete compliance. And if there are any customizations necessary to be added over WSO2's co-accelerator to meet local requirements or local technical standards. If there is any requirements on these core standards, you know, whether it's something to do with the transport layer security or whether it's to do with certificate based validations, WSO2 uh, accelerate is extensible and you would be required to build specific implementations by extending this co-accelerator functionality. So as a toolkit partner, you should be able to identify and analyze this delta. And then if there is a deviation, you can extend the co-accelerator and build a new open banking accelerator of your own. 
And then also you would need to have the capability to maintain ongoing compliance. You wouldn't be able to, you would need to be able to actually follow up with the local technical standards, you know, working with closely with the open banking regional and basically provide updates to the toolkit, which is the last mile of compliance with periodic version updates so that you get your banks compliant with the latest specification always. So the toolkit and the accelerator is, uh, you know, the accelerator is not something that's going to be updated regularly, but the toolkit is something that definitely will be regular, you know, updated regularly given certain changes in specification and so on. So how WSO2 can enable you to build these different toolkits is we can provide training on your, to your teams on WSO2 product usage, the open banking accelerator layer, the uh, architectures of it. And we can actually provide you different enablements in terms of uh, getting your teams up to speed on WSO2 product usage. And in terms of building the toolkit itself, which is the last 10% of open banking compliance, WSO2 has extended, extended uh, you know, already a couple to, of toolkits to public, and we will be able to provide these as references. And these will be backed up with comprehensive documentation, and you will have access to WSO2 teams in order to, uh, you know, query them for any support or get any support on consultancy in order to build these toolkits so that you have expert level knowledge to continue maintaining this for the different banks that you will be working with. And then lastly, WS2 will also have a toolkit building checklist, which will be a, a comprehensive gu guideline in order for you as a partner to ensure that you are building a right toolkit in the right way. And so that you do not have to worry about, you know, uh, later, you know, getting into issues in terms of maintenance. So we will be providing a toolkit building checklist as well in order to support building toolkits for you. So just a quick couple of things that we as WSU2 have been working on. So currently we have worked in Australia with an OEM partner and we've had quite a lot of success in terms of integrating with their innovation platform. And we have basically taken open banking to market in Australia through this OEM partner of ours. And we have, you know, helped them go through multiple design and deployment workshops. Uh, we've been engaging with their customers. And all of this is they have basically seamlessly integrated open banking from WSO2 into their platform itself. And they have multiple banks who are currently going live for compliance deadlines. Uh, we as WSO2 also have provided the highest tier compliance within the UK. So we have provided... Uh, you know, through an OEM partner to meet stricter compliance applicable to CMA nine banks. And, and interestingly, this is one of our banks who actually have a lot of third party providers of fintechs who are currently working with them as well. So we have production fintechs uh, who have been working on one of our highest tier compliance uh, banks in the UK. We've also been working with an early adopter of open banking in Bahrain. So we've had uh, Gulf International Bank has been working with us for quite a while in terms of adapting open banking very early and very recently we've also moved them into uh, complying with the open banking framework. We have done an end-to-end -end implementation and completed deployment within 12 weeks from moving them to uh, a previous open banking to the formal Bahrain open banking framework within a couple of weeks. So we've been working with a couple of partners and we've enabled the partners on the run and parallelly worked with them on a, the first open banking deployment in Bahrain. So these are a couple of success that we've had in uh, you know open banking with WSO2. And now I'll just hand it to Urmila to talk a bit about how you can partner up with WSO2 on open banking and you know different models we can work with. Over to you, Urmila. Thanks, Imad. Um, so I see some of our partners here, but those of you who aren't, I just want to touch upon our partner uh, program, uh, which is a commercial engagement between WSO2 and our partners for mutual benefit. So we have three different types of partner, uh, partner programs, um, reseller partnership, integration partnership, and the technology partnership, each of which are tailored uh, to suit different types of business models. Now, now, for instance, um, if you are, if your primary revenue, if an organization's primary revenue is generated by, um, you know, providing services, then uh, integration partnership is your natural fit. Um, like we were discussing, open banking holds many opportunities, especially in the Middle Eastern region. Therefore, if you want to be part of this journey, and if you want to unlock the potential of uh, BFSI sector using open banking, then you will have to become a toolkit partner. 
Um, at the end of this webinar, you will find my email address. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to guide you to, through the process. And um, I will now hand it over to Seshi to um, conclude this session. Seshi, over to you. Thank you, Irmila. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to uh, summarize the WSO2 advantage for open banking before we head on to the questions. Um, we use a, a, a global open banking experience uh, and we've brought that core open banking capabilities uh, together in this accelerator, uh, which can accelerate uh, the compliance uh, for various regions. <clears throat> so uh, you can work with the global reference standards that we provide uh, and uh, basically use the extension points uh, to enable the required customizations uh, for the various uh, countries uh, that you want to take the open banking solution to. And then, of course, the entire solution is built on top of our industry-leading uh, API platform, uh, which can actually enable impactful collaboration between banks uh, and fintechs, uh, and to provide you know, new commercial opportunities for banks that are now looking uh, to expand their business in this uh, new world of ecosystem play. <clears throat> Our technology is cost effective uh, without compromising on uh, experience. Uh, and as uh, we mentioned before, um, you have the capability of um, um, basically customizing uh, the commercial um, value of what you take to the uh, customers. And then uh, broadly our technology uh, is future proof. We uh, basically we enable microservices. Uh, we can work on any type of containers, uh, and basically uh, we can do any type of hybrid deployment, so that it future proofs the offering to the customer as well. <clears throat> um, we are basically a proven partner in delivering open banking as well as mission critical solutions to global financial services organizations over the years. Uh, and our recognition in um, uh, the leading industry um, analyst reports uh, testament to uh, that success. So with all of this put together, I think there's uh, quite a, a great opportunity for us to work with all of you in taking open banking to the Middle East and Africa region. Um, and we uh, look forward to those collaborations. And with that, um, I'd like to um, finish up uh, the content that we had uh, put together for you uh, and open up the session for uh, questions. Please feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A box and uh, we can answer them live. Um, okay, I think uh, there is a question. Uh, the question is, what are the uh, sets of courses offered for WSO2? Uh, so um, <clears throat> if you go into our website, you will see the different types of courses we have, we provide. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of taking open banking into market, uh, we, uh, we want our, our partners to be uh, well versed with uh, all our technology because the open banking solution uh, is built on top of all our technology. So that would uh, require certification in uh, the WS2 API manager uh, and the WS2 identity and access manager. Uh, and on top of that, we will also provide um, comprehensive training on the open banking um, accelerator uh, and also take you through how you can uh, extend the accelerator to build uh, the country specific open banking customizations. If I can take that question, yeah. So yes, we have the capability of, you know, integrating with Splunk app dynamics. We have different types of monitoring capabilities. You can even uh, plug in JMX agents if there's a requirement. 
So Splunk is a very common thing that we do and we actually pump analytics into Splunk. Uh, so you can use the WSO2 components to capture the analytics or you can basically uh, use the streaming integrator to push them into your different components as required. So there are different models we can work with there again. So if you want to get into more detail, we can have a conversation separately on this as well. Uh, okay, so I'll take the first question in terms of uh, best products for OB, are they the latest products? And okay, so the open banking uh, products of WSO2 open banking framework. So we currently use API manager for as the base product for open banking. And we use I, uh, identity server 5.10. So we have open banking that's currently working on those. So which is the latest API manager and which is one behind in terms of the identity server. But the API manager, we currently use the latest for the open banking framework. So that's the current versions that we are at. Okay, and what are the set of tools offered for DevOps operations within WSO2? So WSO2 API management core itself has certain capabilities in terms of DevOps. So if you're talking of deployment aspect, we have the uh, API controller from WSO2, which can be used to, uh, you know, start up, spin up gateways, or it can be basically used to integrate with pipelines for, uh, you know, CI, CD processors. And there are different capabilities we have in terms of integrating our API manager uh, for, you know, performing DevOps related tasks. But if you are looking in terms of deployment side of things, all of our products can be deployed on uh, containers or on VM based. So we have the capability to provide Docker images with our products. And we also have Helm charts for those interested in more cloud native architectures as well. Um, thanks, Imad. Uh, I think I want to just add one more line to the previous, uh, the answer to the previous question about uh, the versions of the uh, of the core products. Uh, so basically, uh, with the new architecture, it's not really uh, bound to a specific uh, product version, uh, and the new architecture enables upgrading uh, the open banking <clears throat> solution uh, to work with any of the um, uh, versions of WS2 API Manager or WS2 Identity and Access Manager, for example. Um, so uh, it's not tightly coupled with a particular version. Um, I think also uh, um, uh, there was a, a question on um, uh, basically whether the uh, whether a component whether these components can be used. Um, on their own. So for example, if a bank already has uh, a mature API gateway um, <clears throat> that they would like to reuse uh, for uh, their open banking requirement, is it possible, possible for WSO2 to provide uh, the technology requirements around consent management and authentication? Uh, so the answer to that question is yes. Um, the accelerator model actually makes it very easy uh, for us to uh, provide uh, the required API management uh, uh, related uh, open banking functionality or uh, the identity and access management related functionality separately if the customer so wishes to um, continue to use one of their existing vendors uh, for either of those. Um, so there's another question. What is the future roadmap of WS2? Uh, any reference links? Yes, uh, there are uh, the roadmaps, the, the broader roadmaps for the WS2 product stack is uh, available in our website, uh, but we can also uh, send you some links um, around the detailed roadmaps. Okay, I think I think uh, we are just about uh, right over the hour. So thank you, everyone. Thanks. That's that's quite a few set of interesting questions. Thanks for that engaging, uh, you know, interaction that we have had. Uh, thanks, thanks to all of you for taking the time out from your busy schedule and attending this webinar. 
uh, kindly stay connected with Urmila, who's our channel manager, who will be, you know, updating you on how you can enroll yourself for this toolkit program. Uh, and also stay tuned for our future webinars. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks to our panelists for your uh, valuable insights. Thank you, everyone. With this, I will conclude the session. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.